Salute, salute, salute. Welcome to the Real Big Fruit Podcast. I'm your host, Big Fruit, the Michael Jordan of recording, also known as the voice of the streets and better known as your boy, Young Francis M.H. White, the most hated motherfucker on YouTube. But tonight, I do not wish to be hated. Not by the BX. Y'all see the title, My Story of Mad Money Mark, a.k.a. Big Uno. Yeah, Mad Money Mark was a Bronx representative, and he's a racket saddle legend. But you keep game. I was on the jack earlier today with one of the comrades, and we was talking about Mad Money Mark, Big Uno, Panamanian Big Uno. Oh, my God. That was my homie. That was the dude. Listen, man, if you don't know, now you know I'm about to tell you. My story of Mad Money Mark go back to what? 9-1. Four billion adolescents running wild, niggas doing what they do. Brooklyn Bronx beef going crazy. And I remember the day Mad Money Mall came in the building. <laughs> he came in the building, he was in the receiving room. His shit was cocked up. He had on a big t shirt, so you really couldn't see it all, but you could tell from his forearms, his shit was crazy. He had some big ass jewelry on his neck. But what attracted me or, or, or was alarming about the nigga was. His speech, <laughs> man, when he walked up mad fast and he was Panamanian, so his, his, his English was broken, you know what I'm saying? But he was an adult, so I wasn't around him like that. But when he came through the full building, through that receiving room, he had a big ass Gucci link bracelet on. Man, adolescents, you know how we do, we run around, niggas snatching jewelry, niggas trying niggas. But when niggas see man, when he walked, come through the full building, Dragging his shit through the hallway with that big ass bracelet on, on his big ass form. Niggas was like, nah, ain't nobody gonna try to sleep. Ain't nobody gonna try to sleep. But anyway, he fucks around. He gets a visit on a visit. He gets a job on a visiting room. Him and Big Rashawn. Rest in peace, Big Rock. They was the two biggest motherfucking adults in the building. They had the, they had the biggest jury on in the building. And them motherfuckers not only was working on a visit, they had car blunts. The niggas was running up and down the hallways doing what they wanted to do. They was fucking with the police fontaine by the one building. They just was doing what they wanted. They, they was lit. And them niggas was brawling. Rashawn was a little shorter than Bad Money Mark. But Mad Money Mark shit was crazy. And they, were, they wasn't only working on a visit. They was on a visit booking niggas. Yeah, man, because I told you how big Rob robbed Rob the nigga Darskin Troy out of Queens for uh, Kiki High Riser, right? Mark and them niggas was robbing niggas, straight strong arm. Them niggas was so, Mark was so much from big, he ain't even need no knife for no razor. He ran down on you until you get up. Nine times ten niggas was giving up. <laughs> That's how big this thing was. And them niggas was selling burners to the adolescents. So this is when I officially get the no man money, Mark. I sold Mark some jewelry for some burners on a visit. That was my formal introduction to him that one time. Man, when he left the full building, you know, Man Money Mark was one of them niggas in HDM with all them niggas over there, Bush, uh, Top, T Rock, you know what I'm saying? Lil Saquon, Cabeza, Caballo, fucking uh, uh, Randy Love. Yeah, all them niggas, all them bell ringers, you know what I'm saying? Man Money Mark was over there with them niggas. Now, that was 9 1. I think Man Money Mark went up north in 9 2. And 9 4. 9-4, I was in Southport, Southport Vibes. My neighbor was Mad Money Mark Codefendant. I can't remember the motherfucking name, man, but he was a good dude, real quiet. You know what I'm saying? He told me Mad Money Mark was Code D. He broke down their case to me and told me how them niggas threw a nigga off the roof for some crazy shit. Like, them niggas was wild for like, them niggas was BX rappers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas was dangerous up in the Bronx. And they was OGs to me. You know what I'm saying? I was a shorty sucking all that shit in, getting to know the niggas. But his code of was mad cool. I think his code of was originally from Connecticut, too. If I'm not mistaken, homie told me he had he had some dealers out in Connecticut and shit. But we was mad cool. But the kicker was this. His code of <laughs> his code of was one of the niggas cool with Pretty Boy Star in Southport before I came up No, And his code of was one of the niggas telling me, yeah, that nigga Star was talking crazy about you. I'm like, word. He was like, yeah, shut. I can't remember shut name, shut. He had a God body name too. 
Big light skinned kid, real cool, smooth, quiet nigga, but he was very dangerous. He was mad money more coach thing. Now four, I leave South for that goes to Clinton. <laughs> and when I get to Clinton and shit, everybody up there and shit. Niggas was like, yo, this nigga was here, that nigga was here. So I go to C block. And when I'm in C block, my boy Cool K from Brownsville, 10 M boy, salute Beville in the building. My boy, rest in peace to Matt, rest in peace to the OG Wick Brownsville veteran. You know what I'm saying? They had a memorial for him today. I just had to get that out there. You know what I'm saying? So the homie Cool K from Brownsville, he was downstairs. He was poor. So he was ripping and running and shit in the morning time. So one day I fucked around. I'm going down there with Cool K. I'm chilling with him and shit. And they tell the stories about how porters be bugging. <laughs> So a dude tells me a story. He like, yo, yeah, man, money. He go, he called Mark by his whole government name. You know what I'm saying? He said his whole name. Yo, so and so was a porter there. Hey, I was like, word, big nigga, that was my man. He was like, yo, sure, let me tell you about this shit. I'm like, word. He said, yo, dude, dude was running his mouth for some slick shit like that. Man, money, Mark ran up in the cell, son. The done done. <laughs> The nigga was the dun dun. Mark beat blood out this nigga. He lumped this nigga like the nigga did the nigga Haney last night. You know what I'm saying? Mark beat flames out this nigga, right? But the nigga, Mark bounced out the nigga cell. The dude crawled. He, he barely dead, son. <laughs> he crawled down the gallery for their life. <laughs> Made it to the police. Yo, they like, oh shit, what the fuck? Rushed the nigga to the clinic, right? So I guess when the nigga down in the clinic, he tell them niggas what happened. Yo, this what happened. Ah, the porter. <laughs> My money more was the porter. So the police like, okay. So they run down to the block and shit. They come a couple deep, about four deep. They no Mark, ain't no sugar here, big nigga. He might fight. But they think they could whip everybody ass. So four to them was sufficient. <laughs> four niggas to them was sufficient. They ran up in C block. They called Mark by his last name. Yo, Mr. Perry, Mr. Perry. He like, what? He was in his cell. When his cell was open, peeked his head out like, yo, what? They was like, come here. He saw the police and shit, so he already knew what it was. He was like, yo, shut. Peeked his head out. They was like, where's the pipe? <laughs> this nigga done got beat, beat up so motherfucking bad, he done told the police, Mark done beat him with a pipe. <laughs> That's how bad Mark lumped this nigga. So... They come down here, where's the pipe, Mr. Perry? Where's the pipe? Yo, shut. Y'all see the thumbnail, right? Y'all see my little picture. I had to flex the dick because that nigga, man, money mark shit crazy. That's that was me at my I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna say that that was that was me at my epitome in that picture right there. That was at my race show on earth shit right there. And that's nothing compared to Mad Money Mark. Mad Money Mark was magazine material. Mad Money Mark was uh Ronnie Coleman, uh 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 what you call it, student material like Ronnie Mad Money Mark shit's crazy. So they came on the block, where's the pipe with the pipe? Yo, shut and he knew his shit was crazy. Mark said, Oh, these niggas think it's a game. Yo, shut the nigga peeled off his t-shirt and his cell shh. Threw some baby oil on his guns and shit, his chest. Nick stepped out of the shell and told the police, the pipe right here. <laughs> they said Mark flexed on the police. Yo, the pipe right here. The pipe right here. So he's like, oh, shit, yo, calm down, calm down. He was like, nah, the pipe right here. Man, them niggas got some cuff. Yo, cuff that nigga. <laughs> cuff that nigga took Mark right up out of that motherfucker. Yeah, man. Mark knew his shit was crazy. And he used to put that work in, son. But see, Mark wasn't just a regular motherfucking workout nigga. And he ain't eat just anything. Remember, I told you he's from the islands. He's Panamanian, so he, uh, he eat good. He ain't eat a lot of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He ain't picky with what he eat. And then in prison, you know you learn how to eat to live. You know what I'm saying? Not to live to eat. You learn how to eat to live. So his diet was right. But he wasn't your average workout nigga. He was straight bodybuilding. The nigga waist was like this, son. And then nigga, his waist went up to his motherfucking wings. And his motherfucking back, you spread out. Man, Money Mark was the truth, son. Word the mother. I remember the last time I was with Bad Money Mark. It was 02. Attica. C Black. One morning, they cracked me and Mad Money Mark out for a call out. Call out. 
Yo, what's up, Shane? Oh, shit, where you going? Dentist. <laughs> I never forget, sir. Me too. So me and Mad Money Mark roll out to the dentist. Now, I had on the state green shirt with the t-shirt under. Mad Money Mark cocked up. He, in my opinion, he had on the tightest t-shirt he could find. But I'm gonna be 100 with you. It had to be a 7X. <laughs> it had to be a 7X because Mark shit was crazy. Do we go to the dentist? We rolled down there together. We sat in the bullpen together. And we went in the motherfucking dentist office and sat in the two chairs together. Me and Mad Money Mark. <laughs> Yo, this shit crazy. Why they doing they one two on us? Ah, cleaning us up, fix teeth, whatever. Whatever fuck they was doing, both of us. That, that dentist must have hit a nerve, son. And Mad Money Mark grabbed that nigga. Man. Boom. Mad Money Mark, motherfucker, forearms were so motherfucking big. Hands so big. When he grabbed that motherfucking dentist's arm or his hand, boom. Grabbed him by his wrist. Boom. You heard that nigga buckle like a woman. Ah! <laughs> that Mark don't want to catch no soul charge, no crazy shit. So he like, yo, this shit hurt, this shit hurt. But at the same time, he ain't letting that nigga hand go, son. That nigga folded like a pretzel, dropped the motherfucking dental utensils, and called for help. <laughs> then they came up in there, yo, what's going on? Mark was like, yo, Mark had the shit on his, around his neck, shit on gauze, all of his body. He was like, yo, man, Smith tried to kill me. Then they calm down, Mr. Perry, just calm down. And I told you, he in there cocked up with his T-shirt on, looking crazy. Yo, they ain't want no smoke with that nigga Mad Bunny Mark and Clinton. They ain't want no smoke with that nigga in Attica. The two worst prisons in the state. That nigga shit was cocked up crazy. And they say, yo, that nigga Mark bugged out. Nah, he wasn't bugged out. You ain't understand him because his language is broken. And he was Panamanian, you know what I'm saying? He had different culture from us. But yo, let me tell you, there wasn't nothing sweet about that nigga. That nigga fuck you up, bend you up, work with the mother, son. Mad Money Mark, that's the truth. And listen, man, you can't erase history, right? <laughs> so I, I, I was either home or on the bed. I don't think I was on the bed. I was on the bed in my little cuz. Y'all know who he be, Young Tito. You know what I'm saying? If you support the channel, Young Tito, all cap. Show him some love. Anyway, the little cuz was in the joint. He was in one of the mediums way up north, late, late, late in my bed. And he was walking. He said he was in the jail and shit. Niggas running down on him. Yeah, you from LG? Yeah. Girl, you know, fruit? Yeah, wow, what's up? It's my man. It's my man. So my cousin kept sending word to the crib, like, yo, tell fruit I'm here with this man, Big Uno. Oh, I, ooh, ooh. Like, I don't know no nigga named Big Uno, son. They like, yo, the biggest nigga in the jail. Like, Big Uno, fuck is that? Yo, big Panamanian nigga, I will come find out his mad money mark. He changed his name to Big Uno. And word the mother, son, he ran into my little cousin, young Tito. All cap. He ran into the nigga, man. He rolled out the road carpet for the nigga, let the little nigga know he was good. You know what I'm saying? You fruit family, you good. Word the mother, you know what I'm saying? Like Jay Kid said, a lot of lives were saved by me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> word the mother. But anyway, yeah, mad money mark, man, that's the homie, son. I just want to jump on here and show the BX some love because y'all, I fucks with the BX. And I was on the phone today with my homie from the BX and we was talking about Mad Money Mark. I said, you know what, Sean? I'm going to blast off tonight because I, I took a break from writing because that shit getting too good. I told you I had to break that shit up into two parts. I gave y'all the first 30 years of Wise and World, the CMB story based on true events. Part one is going to be 30 years of Wise and World. Part two is going to be the trial, my nigga. Because, listen, they booked World in 04. They ain't convicted to 2016. That's 12 years of drama. That's 12 years of drama I'm going to give y'all. So y'all stay locked in. But right now, it's all about the homie Big Uno. You know what I'm saying? Word. If I'm not mistaken, Big Uno got, got deported after he did his stretch in New York. He got deported. No, he's not Panamanian. I'm sorry. I've been sitting here screaming Panamanian. You know what it is? One of my homies that was Panamanian that I found out in our adulthood, never knew the nigga was Panamanian, he used to converse with Uno. They was cool because they was both from the islands. But my man was Panamanian. Uno was Guyanese. 
Yeah, Big Man Money Mark was Guyanese. Shout out to the Guyana. Yeah, I think that's where they deported Uno back to Guyana. Well, the mother, Big Man Money Mark is Guyanese, not Panamanian. My bad. I corrected myself. Yeah, he's Guyanese. Yeah, I think they sent him back to Guyana. Well, the mother. That's the homie, son, Mad Money Mark, or the mother. So shout out to the BX. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> shout out to the BX. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to do y'all right. I took a break from writing and shit. You know what, man? I'm 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 gonna show some love to Mad Money Mark. That's the homie. You know what I'm saying? If he if he overseas and he on YouTube, he said, Oh shit. <laughs> for the mother. He's like, oh shit, nigga talk about me. And I'm quite sure wherever the fuck he at, he cocked up and he banging out doing what he do. I'm telling you. Y'all see the thumbnail. He was inspired by none other than Ronnie Coleman. I'm telling you, son. Uno was on a mission in prison in the weight pile. Whew. I never worked out with him. I peeked on him in C Block and Attica. I seen some of his routines. Wait, yo, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. He don't lift for all that crazy heavy shit. He do mad reps, though. He do mad reps. Shout out to Big Man Money Mark, AK Uno, boy. Oh my gosh, son. Listen, man, it's your boy, Big Fruit. I just wanted to get up here and show some love to the BX and show some love to my guy, Mad Money Mark, AKA Big Uno. Well, the mother, son. He was a real one. He was a real one. And all the OGs that was in the, in the prison system, 91. 90, 91, 92, 93, and beyond. Y'all know what he was hitting for. Rack and Salad, up north, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Make big man, big man money mark was a Rack and Salad legend. And he was a BX terror. Word the mother. Listen, man, it's your boy, Big Fruit. I'm going to get a body here. I've been running my mouth, but I've been showing love to the BX, so I ain't mad about that. I hope y'all not. Until next time, y'all stay tapped in because y'all don't never know when I'm going to drop, man. I told you, man, I do this shit on the whim. You know what I'm saying? Call me one take fruit. I get it done. Until next time, salute.